in this case, I'm going to go into Microsoft Project over here on my taskbar. Now, from, uh, from the initial screen, you can make a blank project, which is what we're going to do, or you have lots of other templates. So you can try some of those templates. It gives you a tremendous head start. Uh, you can even uh, integrate project with SharePoint. Project works very well with Outlook. You can share the tasks and, and the resources with Outlook and with SharePoint. We're not going to talk about that too much today, but it is possible. So we're going to go and make a blank project. So a project file contains all of the tasks, resources, costs, and everything about that one particular project. All right, so today, let's say we make a project. Let's say you have a... Um, Let's say you have a trade show that's coming up. So we're gonna you know, talk about all the different tasks that might be involved with a trade show and show the different dependencies and these kind of things. Now, the first screen that you're gonna see is where you can actually list your tasks. But you're gonna see, uh, we're gonna get to many other screens during today's presentation and I'll show you uh, how to go back and forth. Now, sometimes during the presentation, I'll make my mouse do that so you can find my mouse that way. So what I usually like to do is I like to get my tasks down and then uh, we'll talk about adding the, the, the predecessors and what all that means. And then by doing that, it's gonna help us um, actually build the Gantt chart. So let's say you have this trade show coming up. So one thing I would have to do is reserve the booth. Now, when it talks about the duration, uh, you can put in a number here and then so let's say to reserve a booth that's going to take you know let's say an hour so i'll say one now um you know if i type an h here it's going to mean an hour if i type an m it would mean a minute if i type in d it would be uh, for a day a w would be for a week and m would be for a month so those are the different time frames uh, minutes, hours, days, weeks, and months. So let's say it's gonna be one hour. Uh, so let's say that's gonna start on uh, today. So we'll pick today's date. Okay, and then based on the duration, it automatically uh, calculates the finish date. And then you can see how it puts that on what's gonna be the Gantt chart over here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna type in my tasks uh, and then we'll put in the different time frames and the dependencies. So then we have to pay for that booth. Uh, maybe that's going to be one hour. So I'm actually going to put the uh, the tasks in. Then I'll put the dates and times in, and then the predecessors. So this is the way I usually will do it. I'll just list the um, list the tasks first. So then we might uh, design the the booth display. So you can see when I hit the enter key, it just goes to the next row down. So that's why I think it's just easier to get my, uh, get my tasks in, as many as I can think of. So, you know, at a trade show, usually you have a contest of some kind. So then I'll think about um, giveaway items, maybe with your logo on there, these kind of things. Then uh, we wanna uh, order, once we, design the booth display, we would order the booth display, maybe from a sign company, these kind of things, you know. Obviously, I'd have to design it before I order it. So I could start to see that um, there would be a predecessor for that, but we'll do that in just a second. Then I have to order the brochures and other, uh, other documents, other forms then uh, order any kind of promotional items you know with our logo on there as the giveaways all right so uh, then we have to start gathering all the uh, materials all right so getting your tasks in is not easy now you can see i made a styling mistake there it's no big deal you never you're never set in stone, of course. You can go back and edit things pretty easily here. Uh, so then we'll uh, bring the materials over to the 
um, display arena. Then we have to set up the booth. Uh, then we'll have to have to do the trade show, you know, and then we'll have to uh, break down break down the booth after the trade show is over and then we'll uh, bring the materials back back to the office and then hopefully you got some leads so then we'll have to follow up with the leads so let's say these are the tasks for the uh, the trade show now, this project can have as many tasks as you need, uh, of course. So what I'll do now is I'll put in the time that I think each of these tasks is gonna go. So we're in the planning stages of our project, right? Uh, so this is what you think it's gonna take. Now we know in real life, <laughs> those numbers are hardly ever the right numbers, but we can always uh, put in the actuals uh, once we get started with the project. Here, I'm just kind of planning everything. So let's say designing the, the booth will be eight hours. Thinking of a contest may, might take three hours. Thinking of the giveaway items might be another three hours. All right. Uh, so ordering it, you know, by the time you talk to the people and get everything right, uh, that might be three hours. Now, uh, here it's noticing that I uh, am doing something repetitively. So I can actually uh, highlight multiple tasks and then assign that all to the same time frame. So that's what that's telling me, that I could actually you know, highlight multiple tasks like that and then put them all in at the same time. Uh, so let's say ordering brochures will be two hours. Ordering the promotional items might take two hours by the time you, know, you talk to the person and get the order right. So gathering the materials, might take a whole a whole day. So here I'm, I'm doing, you know, specifically saying a day there. Uh, bringing over the materials from our office, maybe that's a three hour, by the time we, we load the van and take it over, maybe, maybe, you know what, maybe we should say four hours there. Setting up the booth itself is gonna be another uh, four hours. Let's say the trade show is two and a half days. So I'll say two and a half uh, days there. Good. Breaking down the trade booth shouldn't be as long. So maybe that's going to be three hours. Bring the materials back will be another four hours. And then follow up. That might take a whole week. To follow up with the leads and so on. Uh, so we're getting our tasks uh, in, as you can see. So now what I'll do is maybe uh, give them some dates. So let's say if I'm going to reserve the uh, booth on Monday, I'll pay for it on Tuesday. Uh, maybe the design will be on Wednesday. You know, so uh, you can see how it's taken the start date and what we type in, and then the finish date will be um, whatever we, you know, whatever is based on the duration. Thinking of a contest, so maybe that's on Thursday. Uh, thinking of the giveaway items will be on Friday. Good. So then next week we'll start to order uh, what we need. So maybe we'll order the booth on uh, Monday or how about next Tuesday. Put these in on uh, Wednesday of next week. Good. We'll order that one on Thursday. Good. All right, so then we're gonna gather all the materials. I wanna make sure you have everything uh, by the 24th of February. So we're gonna start getting together because maybe the, the trade show is gonna be the first week of, of March. So I wanna make sure I have everything that I need at least a week ahead of time. So let's say setup is gonna be that Monday. All right, uh, the same day we delivered, of course, we're gonna set that up. And then the trade show itself is going to be uh, on March the 3rd. Now, we have to break it down by that Friday. 
And then we'll bring the materials back on that Friday. Good. This has to be March, of course. Good. And then you can see how I can scroll down over here to the right to see more of the tasks. And then we'll follow up. We'll start following up the next week after the trade show. All right, so I'm putting in my tasks, the durations, the start time, and then it calculates the finish time based on the, uh, the duration. See how the finish is, is one week, as you can see. Now, <clears throat> let's start to talk about our predecessors here. So a, a really important thing is, you know, certain tasks depend on the completion of another task before they can get started. So that's called predecessors. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is reserve a booth. Uh, then we have to pay for it. Well, before I pay for it, I have to reserve it, right? So I'm going to click on the pull down and I'm going to say, well, you know, number one is the dependency or a predecessor. Uh, now, one task could have more than one predecessor, of course. So that's good. Now, uh, before we design it, we better make sure that we've paid for it and that's all reserved. So I'm going to say number two is important before we design the booth. We'll make sure that we have it secured and everything is all set. Uh, I, I wouldn't even think of a contest before we paid for a booth. So that's going to be a predecessor. Now notice what starts, starts to happen. Uh, then we can see the, we can see these different dependencies over here. Uh, so that's going to be good. So in this case, now I can also adjust the dates over here, which I'll, uh, you can see as I'm setting the predecessors, it's changing the dates. So I'll go back and change the dates in just a second. So in this case, I can't think of a way to give away items before I pay for the booth. Uh, so then once, once we design it, then we can order it, right? So this is going to be dependent on the fact that we've designed it. So that'll be for design there. Like I said, one task could have more than one predecessor. So once I um, then design the booth display, I can also the order the, um, the brochures and the promotional items. So that design is kind of a big step, right? Uh, so gathering all the materials would have been dependent on the fact that we ordered everything, right? So I'm going to click on this pull down. That's going to be dependent that I ordered the booth display, the brochures, and the promotional items. So notice how that one has the different dependencies there. Again, I'm going to go back and change the, uh, the dates. So then uh, now I would have had to gather the materials before I bring them over to the trade show, right? So gathering the materials is important before I bring them over, I would imagine. Then... I would have to bring over the materials before I can set up my booth. Then, of course, the trade show is set, uh, dependent on the fact that I set up the booth. So you can start to see the daisy chain here. But when we make our dates, it'll, we'll, it'll expand a little bit. Of course, I would have had the, had the trade show. And really, set up the booth and the trade show is necessary for me to break it down. Bring about the materials is dependent on the fact that I break down the booth. And then follow up on the leads, of course, is dependent on the fact that I had the trade show and I brought the materials back. So all those are dependencies for that one. So as you can see, it changed my dates. That's okay. We're just going to fix those again. So this is the 21st. Now, actually, when I'm changing the dates, uh, it might change some of the the future ones, as you can see. So uh, the design was going to be on the 22nd. This one will be Thursday. And this is Friday. Good. Now this one was going to be next week. So I'll change that to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Good. So you can see things are pretty flexible here. So we're going to make sure we gather everything. Let's say by, we'll change it to the 17th, give us enough time. Uh, this will be in March, of course. It'll be March 2nd. This will be March 2nd. And then the trade show itself is March 3rd. I'm going to break it down on that Friday. 
bring back the material on Friday. And then we're going to follow up with the leads on the following week after the trade show is over. Good. All right, so looking good here. Now, um, you can see how now the start dates are filled in, the finish dates, the predecessors. Now, check out your Gantt chart. It actually automatically builds the Gantt chart, which shows the dependencies. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this project. That was a lot of work. So the first time you save it, you're going to give it a good name. So I pick on save and then we'll give it a location. Usually it'll put it into the documents folder, but of course you can pick a different folder. So I'll call it a trade show 2020. And then the file is going to have an MPP extension. And then I'll right now that'll be under the, um, that'll be under the documents folder. Now, if I go to print depth, we'll pick on file and then print then we can see the tasks, and then on the next page, then we can see the dependencies. Uh, we can see the Gantt chart as well. All right, so no problem with that. We still see the full Gantt chart. So we're starting to get uh, something going on with our project here. Down here, it has the legend. Now, of course, you can go to page setup, like any other program, and you can decide if you want something uh, as far as what the margin size is going to be, what's going to be in the header and the footer. Uh, so that, that page setup is similar to Microsoft Excel. What's different here is the legend. So do I want to see uh, this? This is the legend. Do I want to see that on every page or uh, just on one page or not at all? And then we can talk about which view that we want as well. All right. So page setup, pretty standard with all the other programs. Uh, here, I got to the page set up that way. I'm going to go ahead and go back at this time. Uh, so now let's get into some of the finer detail of the project. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick on the project uh, menu. And you can kind of see that the menus work like the other Microsoft Office programs. When I click on that menu, uh, of course, the ribbon changes. Of course, we have the quick access toolbar. So you'll see familiar concepts here. Uh, so if I pick on project, I want to pick on the project information. And here, based on what I've filled in so far, it'll have the start date, the finish date. Uh, and then uh, we're going to talk about, you know, you, you can have different calendars for the project. Here it's using the standard calendar and so on. If I pick on the word statistics, right now we can see that well, there's no cost assigned yet because we have to assign the resources, which we're going to do very soon to get some cost, but it gives you kind of a, 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 an overview of what's going on with the project so far. We haven't marked anything as complete, so that's why these are 0%. But when we start marking things complete, then um, things will fill in. And we have, when we have the resources, uh, then the cost will fill in as well. All right, I'm going to pick on close. Now, another thing that I want to talk about with the project, beside the project information, is uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the working time. So you can change the schedule. So if you remember on that one screen, it was based on the standard calendar. We also have a 24 hour shift calendar or a night shift calendar. Now you can make a new calendar uh, if you needed to. Uh, so let me show you how you go further with this. The exceptions might be holidays. All right. So if you had, uh, uh, the bank holidays probably are already in there, but if you had special holidays, you can include those in there. Uh, what's going to be really important on this window is the work weeks. So then when I pick on work weeks, I can see the details. So in this case, if you um, decide that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if they have different work times, you can set that here. Otherwise, you could just use the project default times. So I'm going to click on OK, but if there was something special that you want to notate about those uh, days for the project with their start time and end time, you could do it on this window. I'm going to come down here and I'll pick on Options. So then you can decide when your work week starts on. Let's say it starts on Monday. Then when does the fiscal year start? So these can be all important for your project and for your accounting. Um, so for, does your day start at 8? Let's say it really starts at 9, 9 to 5. Uh, so, you know, then we have uh, eight days, 
eight hours per day, and so on. So then there's other things that we can change about this screen. And this can all affect your project. So another way to get to this screen, if you notice, is talking about the options. Well, think about the other Microsoft Office programs. I can pick on File and then Options to get to the same window. The way we got into there was, well, let me show you how we got to this screen. I picked on the Project menu, and then I picked on Change Work Time. So notice how you can have different schedules. Uh, if you remember when I went to the project information, it was going to be based on the standard uh, project schedule, which is here. We could create a new calendar if you needed to. Now, where I pick on work weeks, I can put in the actual days. I can put the times for each day. Notice how the times now filled in based on those options that I specify. But you can change them here if you needed to. And then um, really to go further, I picked on options. So this will really help you get very, very clear about that project. And there's many things you can go through, as you can see. So I'll pick on OK. Very similar to some of the other Microsoft uh, programs, if you think about it. And just like all the other Microsoft programs, help is readily available. Microsoft Project is widely supported. So this uh, webinar is going to get you started with your project. And then there's a lot of help online. It's very widely supported. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK here. Okay, now notice when I went back to the project information over on the project menu that we don't have any costs associated with it yet. So now we're going to start to assign the resources. I'm going to pick on statistics. See right now, uh, nothing is complete. There's no cost assigned. Also, we can see that it's going to start and finish. And that's pretty much what this is giving us right now. But then this will start to fill in when we start to add the resources. So I'm going to pick on close. All right, so if I scroll back up, we can see the individual tasks. By the way, if I click on a task, and then you can pick on your task menu up top, here's how we can go further with the individual tasks. So if I pick on task and then information, then you can get really, really detailed with that task. Here I can tell it uh, the percent complete. Oh, there's, there's another way to mark it complete as well. If you notice the task menu, uh, I can pick 0%, 25, 50, 75, or 100% complete. Or if there was a specific percentage, you can change that over here. Then um, if you go through the different tabs here, you'll start to see some other information. And all of that's really going to fill in, or many, much of it's going to fill in when we fill in our resources. So the way I got to that screen is I pick on a task, I pick on the task menu, and then I can say task information. And then you get more of a detailed screen. Now, if you can imagine, another way to get to that same window would be if I right click something, uh, if I right click on that task, then I can pick on the information there. You get the same kind of screen. Now, watch where my mouse is going to go. <clears throat> if you come over here to the right, and uh, if you right click there, this is where you can get to lots of different views within Microsoft Project. So far, we've only been in Gantt chart view. Or actually, I just showed you the task form. Uh, and that's going to be more specific information about that task, about the individual task. Uh, I'm going to right click and I'll go back to the Gantt chart. <clears throat> well, I want to start to assign employees and even resources uh, that are not employees. So watch where I'm going to go. I'm going to right click on this section over here. And then we'll go to uh, the resource form. This is one way to do it. We can also go to the resource sheet. Right now, if I go to the resource sheet, there's nothing really in there. This is kind of like a spreadsheet format. Uh, I can type in stuff in, in there. But uh, a lot of times I go to the resource form and start to type in something here. So let's say we're going to have, I'll type in some people that will be associated with this project. So let's say Mary, you type in the name, uh, the initials, and then if you have a budget for that, how much time is going to be associated, that could be the max units. That would be like the budget for that person. Then here's where we can start getting into the cost. 
And then when we assign these resources to the test, which we're going to do in a few minutes, then we'll start to see the cost for that project. So let's say Mary uh, is going to get 20 and she's going to be part of admin. So you fill in whatever you have on this window. I'm going to click on OK. You can always go back and change that information. So now I'll go to the next person. So let's say we also have Jim. And Jim is, uh, let's say, JB. And uh, let's say Jim is, uh, he's on the design team. So maybe he makes a little bit more. And he's on the design team. See how I have this group. And I can report in the group and do different things with that. We usually I'll use that for like maybe the department within the company. Good. So we have Jim. I'm just going to type in a few people. So then we have April. And uh, April is uh, AB. And then let's say April is in marketing. So let's say she makes the same as Jim. Okay, good. So I'm just adding some of these people. And then we're going to assign these people to the tasks. So you can see setting up your project might take a little time, of course, between the time of setting up your tasks and setting up your resources. Uh, so let's say Tina is in sales. So, so let's say she's going to be on commission. So we'll do sales right here. Good. Uh, let's say Tina is TR. Do another person. Now, you can see how I can pick on previous and see the people that I've put in already. So after Tina, we'll have Bill. And Bill is in transportation. Good. Okay, good. And then we have Pat. And Pat is part of uh, construction. Good. And let's say we have Terry. And Terry is part of construction as well. All right, so I'm doing my resources here, everybody. And this is good. Now, uh, I'm actually going to go back. I want to go back to uh, Bill and uh, Terry and Pat because, no, uh, well, if they worked on the weekend or, or overtime, I could put an overtime in there as well. You see the overtime rate. Now, I'm actually going to go back to a different view. I'm going to right click over here. Now, I want to see the resource sheet, which is more of that spreadsheet format. And then we can kind of see what we have here. Excellent. Now, I'm actually going to, uh, another resource might be like a piece of equipment. So let's say we need a transportation van, and that is going to be a, uh, a, a piece of material. And then over here, let's say every time I use that, every time I use the van, uh, it'll be, maybe we have to rent the van. So that's going to be $100. So that is per use. All of these other people are per hour, and then I can have overtime. But for the van, I have to rent that each time. And let's say it's $100 per use. So you can see how I have that one as well. Okay. So another way to go back to your views, everybody, is the view menu. If I pick on view, then you start to see your different views here. So I can click on that pull down for the Gantt chart, test usage. Uh, and then we start to see some of our other views. Okay. And then even there's something that's called other views. But what I like to do is if I right click on this section, then that's a quick way to go back and forth with my views as well. All right. So now we've set up the tasks. We set up the resources. Now, when we start to assign the resources to the tasks, that's when we'll start to see a cost. So I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart. I'm going to right click over here and I'll pick on Gantt chart. Good. So this is going to be a really important view. We want to assign the resources to the tasks. So I'm going to right click on this task and then look what it says. 
assign the resources, right? So I'm doing this in the logical order. I set up my tasks, then I set up my resources, then I'm going to assign the resources to the tasks. Okay, so let's say the admin person is going to uh, make, is the one that has to reserve the boost. That's going to be April. Uh, that's going to be Mary. Pick on Mary. Now, of course, more than one resource can be assigned to a task, and that's perfectly fine. But I'll pick on Mary, and I'll pick on assign. Good. Now, this window will stay open. Now, I'm just going to go to the other tasks. So, who's going to pay for the booth? Well, uh, let's say Mary has the corporate ca uh, cr credit card. So, Mary's going to be key on this whole operation, uh, as the admin people many, uh, many times are. Uh, so, Mary will pay for the booth. Now, the design of the booth will be the design team, and that's going to be Jim. So Jim is going to be for that task. I'm going to pick on Jim and pick on Assign. Now, even from this window, I can add resources if I need to, or I can just type them in over here. Who's going to think of the contest? Well, that's going to be marketing. So we'll pick on April. Who's going to think of the giveaway items? That's also April. Right? So April is going to be involved with those two pretty heavily. Now, as far as ordering the booth display and the brochures and the forms, well, guess what? April, Mary, and Jim have to work together on those. So what I'll do is I'm going to hold down my control key. I'll pick on April, Jim, and Mary. All right, so I can do a multiple selection there by holding down the control key, and I'm going to assign them to that task. Good. Uh, as far as ordering the brochures, that'll be April, Jim, and Mary as well. They have to get, all three have to have to collaborate and see what we're going to get. And then even for order promotional items, it's going to be all three of those people. Good. So now who's going to gather all the materials? Well, I would probably say marketing and um, so we'll say marketing and admin. All right. April and Mary is going to gather everything together. Who's going to bring the materials over? Well, that's going to be our transportation person, which is Bill. All right, Bill will be bringing the materials over. Who's going to set up the booth? Well, that's construction. So that's going to be uh, Pat and Terry. All right, so we'll pick on Pat. Again, I'm going to hold down my control key and pick on Terry. And we'll pick on assign. Good. Now, who's going to be manning the trade show? Well, that's going to be Mary is going to be there. And also sales and marketing. So uh, Tina is going to be there and also April. All right, so you have uh, three people working the booth. Good. Who's going to break down the booth? Well, that's construction, right? So we'll pick on uh, Pat and Terry. So you can see how this all flows together. I made my tasks, I made my resources, and now I'm assigning the resources to the tasks. Uh, so now who's going to bring it back? Well, that's transportation. That's going to be Bill. And then who's going to follow up with the leads? Well, that's sales. That's going to be Tina. All right. Now you can see how I misspelled that test. It's not a big deal. I'll just go ahead and change that. You're never really set in stone here, of course. You can always change things uh, on the fly, which is going to be necessary for your project. So this is a great window. Let me show you how I got to that window in the first place. Usually, I'll right-click on the tasks, and then I'll pick on Assign Resources. And then away we go, right? And notice how that window stayed open. So now, let's see what happened to the cost of the project. In this case, I'm going to pick on the Project tab, and I'll pick on Project Information. Now we can start to see, if I pick on Statistics, that, you know, we're, we're budgeting based on the uh, resources and the time Right now, we're budgeting 3180 okay? Now, obviously, that doesn't include whatever the, trade, whatever the trade show booth costs. So, really, I should add another resource into here. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, why don't we add another resource? So, I'm going to right-click over here, and I'll pick on uh, the resource sheet. And let's say the trade show itself has to be incorporated in here. So... That's going to be material. That's going to be a cost, let's say. And let's say, 
some of us have read at trade shows uh, before. Let, let's say to get that booth, it was $1,000. Now, I know it might be more than that, okay? But let's just use a round number. I'll say that's going to be $1,000. Okay. Some of you are thinking, well, that's going to be yeah, much higher than that. Well, it depends on your market and the trade show and all that, right? But just for this example. Now, I want to assign the van to a couple of the tasks and also the trade show. So let's go back again. I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart. So let's say when we pay for the booth, why don't we assign the cost to that? So I'll, I'll right click there. I'll pick on assign resources. And then that's going to be the trade show itself. So that, that cost will be incorporated into the, um, the uh, full cost of the project. Good. Now for the van, that's going to be involved with the delivery, right? So I'm going to click on this one, right click and say um, assign resources. And we'll pick on the van. Now remember that was per use, right? So we'll pick on assign. Then I'll pick on uh, bring the material back. And then we need the van for that one as well. Notice how it remembers the most recent choice. So that, that did help us a couple times as we were building these. And I'll click on uh, Assign. Now, if I go back to or order the promotion of materials, let's say I wanted to just show the salespeople, right? Well, this is where the group might come in, or uh, that was uh, admin. Uh, so I'll right click, I'll pick where uh, Filter, and then we'll click here. Remember that group that we set up? So I'll pick on group. Maybe I just want to see the admin people. And then notice how uh, April comes up. So, you know, that group that we use could be useful as a filter. And then notice how we can filter on many other things as well. Or you can show all the, uh, all the resources. So now that I've added the price of the trade show in and the price of the van, let's see what the project uh, cost is now. And we can start to see the dependencies and, and the people involved with those tasks. So I'll pick on the project information under the project menu. And if I pick on statistics, then we can start to see, well, now the total cost, including the cost of the trade show and the people and the van is now 43.80. But, but this is still in the planning stage, all right? Uh, I'm going to pick on close now. Now, let me start to show you some of the other views that can be very, very helpful for you. So, again, the way I like to do it is I like to right click over here. Uh, let's see what the task form looks like this time. Now it's going to change because now we can see the resources assigned to that tasks, right? So we can start to see things tie together now. I'm going to right click on that uh, item again. Let's see what the task sheet looks like this time. Uh, so then we see just the task by themselves without the Gantt chart. And now we can see the predecessors and the resources. So you just get different views of your project uh, that can be extremely helpful. I'm going to right click. Uh, let's see what the task usage looks like. Okay. So then uh, this is more of how many hours per day is going to be used for that task, right? So that's an interesting way to look at it. It's actually breaking it down. The, the task is then broken down into the resources. Right? And then um, one hour, this is just one usage here, and so on. So now we can kind of have it broken down by the day, how many hours per day. So that's a great view. That was called task usage. Let's see what the timeline looks like. Uh, so we can actually use the timeline to show, okay, it's going to start on the 1st of January, I mean the 20th of January and end, uh, and then we'll see when we mark things complete, then that'll fill in. Um, and then let's take a look at the resource form this time. Now we see all of, all of our resources. So you can enter things into here, of course. But now Mary is assigned to all of these tasks. So before we were looking at the tasks and the resources assigned, now this is kind of the reverse. It's the resource and all the tasks that are assigned. That was called the resource form. Let's talk a look at the resource graph. This one, uh, it, it's kind of, uh, it's not filled in. You can see the, the usage of the different people as far as, you know, what, what Mary is, is being used for. Let's go to the resource sheet. That has the resources uh, in a list there. Right. 
and then you can group them. Of course, you can sort on any of these items, just like Word or Excel. Notice how those pull downs are there. So now I can see, uh, you know, everything, list, the construction people are now together and so on. So you can sort and filter these as you need to. So uh, now this one has the resources uh, based on the calendar. Instead of the task, it's broken down. So now it's the resources and the task, and we can see what hours are filled in. So these views really give you a great overview of, of what's uh, going on with the project. So I'm gonna go back to the Gantt chart. Now there is more views. If you, uh, you know, there's quite a few uh, views actually. And then if we ever did a, an advanced Microsoft project class, uh, we would talk about some of the other views. But the, the views that you use all the time are right here when you right click on this section. Those are the views that you do use most of the time. Just be aware you can get to more views when you pick on more views from this window. So let's go back to Gantt view. Okay. So let's say after we've come up with um, the design of the booth and we thought of the contest and, the, and the, the giveaway items. Let's say that's a real milestone. So I'm going to click here and then I'll pick on the task uh, menu and then over here I'll pick on the word milestone. So I want to add a milestone to the project right there. Good. So, uh, so I'm going to call that one uh, design phase is over. Okay, good. Now, see what I'm going to do? I'm going to move that this milestone is that diamond. I'm going to move that to the point where um, the design is over, over here. Good. So once we get to where they're, uh, where they're done, so let's say that should be the 24th. Okay, good. So once we get to all those things, then that's one milestone for the project. It's just uh, something else that we can report on. It kind of gives you a, 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 um, an overview of where, you know, maybe a, an important accomplishment. Let's add another uh, milestone once everything is ordered. So we've ordered the, um, the booth display, the brochures, the promotional items. So I'm gonna add another milestone here. So again, I'll pick in the task menu and I'll pick in the word milestone. Good. So then I'll say everything has been ordered. Good. Now I'm going to move that to the point where we'll move that diamond, the milestone to the point where everything has been ordered. Let's say that's going to be right about there. All right. So then, uh, then, you know, a gather on the materials. And at that point, we'll make another milestone. Once we've ordered everything, we're going to make another milestone to make sure everything has been, you know, once we've gathered it. So we'll make another, I can just click on that one task and make a milestone. And now see, I want that below that one. So I can always move these. So I'm actually going to move this one right below that one. Just drag it down. It's fine. Good. Then, for this one, I'll move the diamond after the point that we order uh, those items. That'll be another milestone once we've gathered everything. And I say, uh, I'll call that one, everything is ready. So then, you know, at that point, we just have to bring it over, set it up, and so on. So I like to add those milestones at, a, at important parts of the project. I really like those views. If I right click over here, I show you some of the important views and all the information that, that gives you. But then notice how we have the report menu. All right, so right away, there's some canned reports that are excellent. So I'll pick on the dashboard. Let's see a cost overview. So you can see uh, 4380 is what the cost is. However, because we haven't marked anything complete, you know, it says zero complete there. We haven't used any cost yet. But notice what happens. Uh, it shows you the cost for each individual task uh, based on the resources. Excellent report right there. So I picked on the report menu and then dashboards. That was called the cost overview. 
let's take a look at the project overview. So then, again, we haven't marked anything as uh, complete yet, but we will very soon. That's a really good report, though. Uh, under the dashboard, uh, now, how about upcoming tasks? It'll show you what's coming up or that's coming up in the next week or so. And then how about the work overview? And, and again, uh, this is going to be the budget versus the actual, but, you know, nothing has been assigned, nothing has been marked as complete yet. But that's an excellent report. So then take a look at the resources. If there's any over allocated resources, in other words, you either said that you want to just use them for so many hours and the project is using them for more hours or they're being used for more hours in one day than they're supposed to, then we can report on that. But let's take a look at resource overview. This is uh, really what's budgeted and this will be the actual where we start to mark things as complete. Uh, so let's talk about the cost. You know, so look at all these great reports that you have. What's in progress. Now, critical tasks uh, are things that, you know, have to be done. But let's go back to the Gantt view. I'm, I'm just going to uh, pick on, going to right click over here, uh, pick on the Gantt chart, and we're back to here again. So I want to start to mark some things as complete. So let's say we've reserved the booth, all right? So in this case, I can uh, go into the information and put, put in the percent there, or we can just do it on the task menu. So I'll pick on task, and let's say I can mark it as 25% complete, 50, 75. Let's say that one's complete. Now, notice what happens. Uh, now, if I run my reports, then that should start to show. Like, uh, we have the check mark over here that marks it as complete. But let's go back to that report now, as far as the dashboard and the project overview. Now we can start to see that some of this uh, is complete, right? So let's start to mark some of these as uh, complete. So we're going to go back into the Gantt chart. Okay. So let's say now we've paid for the booth. So again, I'm going to click on that task. And we'll pick in the task menu. That's 100% complete. Let's say the design is only 50% uh, done. So we're going to mark that one as 50%. Let's say they've already thought of the contest. And they've already thought of uh, the giveaway items. All right. So now let's take a look at some of our reports. Now that things are more filled in. So I'll pick in the report menu. I'll pick on the dashboards. Let's take a look at the cost overview now. So now you can see 11% of it is complete. And now, you know, we're starting to see the remaining cost and the actual cost and so on. So once you start to mark things complete, then uh, things will make more sense. Let's go back to our Gantt chart. Now, let's say in, in actuality that even though you planned uh, eight hours, let's say uh, it really took us uh, 10 hours to design that because it, it got to be more complex and things like that. So I'm going to pick on the task menu. So in this case, I'm going to just change it. Instead of eight, we'll change it to 10. Now notice what happened. It assumes that there was eight hours on Wednesday and two hours on Thursday. So, uh, you know, we can always go back and change the times, as you can see. And then, of course, that would have changed the project information for the budget. I should have seen what the uh, budget was before, but I'm sure this number now includes the, um, the, the new time that we've added. Let's go back to our reports. If I pick on report, dashboards, cost overview. Now you can start to see that those, I, I know this number was a little bit lower than that, be, than that before. Of course, we add it to the cost of the budget by adding time. Now, in this case, I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart. Now, let's say we're done that design. So we go back to that task. And at this point, we're going to pick on the task menu, make it 100%. Notice what happens with those longer tasks. One way you can tell that it's complete is over here and another way you can tell it's complete is 
by looking at the uh, the color of that of that bar. So we can tell that that one is complete as well. So see how these bars are not filled in, but these ones are. Now, if you want to change the design of your Gantt chart, I can right click on the Gantt chart. And then in this case, I can pick on uh, bar styles. And then you can, you know, change this to just about anything you wanted to, as far as the different colors and all that. I right, see so you have a huge amount of flexibility here.